Hi, I'm Stavros and welcome. Now you may remember some videos back where I revealed this Honda Civic that I bought. So let me just start by reading out one comment that came in through Twitter. And this is from T Arns at T Streets 93. And he says, hey, didn't bother buying either the C-Class Merc or the VW Golf that was in one of your vids. What made you get the red Civic? Well, that's what I'm here today to explain to you all why I bought this Honda Civic and not plenty of other cars that I did look at and test drive. So I did go for the Civic. So I'll show you all around the car, then we'll go for a drive and I'll just explain <laughs> what it is about this Civic that made me buy it. So let's go. So starting with the exterior design here, of course it's not going to be to everyone's taste. People will prefer the Golf Mark 7, but I do like the design of the FK2 and these handles here as well, which sadly are gone on the new FK7 10th generation, but they are on this generation and the generation before. And I do like the protection around the arch there and the 16 inch alloy wheels on 205 55 profile tires. Uh, these tyres are Gremax, never heard of them. I'll change them to Bridgestone at some point. I'll just get a bit of wear out of them first. And these little plastic strips here, you'll see them on the diesel version. They're just to make it more aerodynamic and save on CO2. I think they save one gram of CO2 per kilometre. <laughs> so there you go. Um, now I'm just going to show you the inside for practicality. Now, of course, what a lot of people loved about this particular model is the way that you can fold up the seats, lock them into place, just demonstrate this one, and locked. And look, you have a completely walkthrough area here. So that is how practical the Civic is. Very easy to get in and out of and stand all your pot plants there if you wish. So plenty of storage there. And looking at the boot space here, of course, something the Civic is known for, very spacious boot. And we have our jacking equipment there behind that cover. And also our pumping equipment there, that puncture repair kit, which I don't like using, which is why I put my spare wheel from my old car into this car and also a pump in there as well. Now, let me just fold down these rear seats and just show you the practicality. I've got that clipped down. So you can see for yourself just how much space the Honda Civic has. Just another one of those reasons why I chose this car. I just love the practicality of this Civic. Okay, now we're going to look at the engine bay. And I can show you this Honda ID Tech 2.2 diesel developing 148 brake horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque. So it is a quite a good puller on the motorway going between say 50 and 70 miles per hour. It really is a nice torquey engine. And I'll let you know the miles per gallon once I get this tank full right down because I did fill it up fully and I'm still using that tank. Uh, when I filled it up, it had a range of over a thousand kilometers showing up on the trip meter. So we will see what sort of miles per gallon, hopefully in around the 50 miles per gallon mark. But that is your 2.2 diesel. We're just going to hop inside now. This is your key, simply unlock and lock and flick it open, unlock the car. Now the mirrors can be electrically operated and they can also fold in and out. So we have all our electric window switches there, front and rear. Now the seats, not as supportive as the Honda Civic Type R, but still comfortable. It would be nice to get them a bit lower. They can be lower on the 10th generation. 
So that was just one of the improvements Honda made when they moved the fuel tank from underneath the front seats to the rear. They were able to get that driver's seat a bit lower, but still, it's not too bad. Um, so we have our two-tier design dashboard there, which is now gone on the 10th generation. Um, so that was just some of the improvements Honda made on the new Civic. So let's just hop inside. I do like the design of the dashboard in this Civic now. And uh, we have a nice thick leather steering wheel there and all our functions there for our media on the left and cruise control on the right, which I really did want in this car to have cruise control and all our phone functions there. So you can pair up your phone with the Bluetooth and all our stereo functions there and underneath air conditioning, which I really did want, and our stop start function button there. Uh, the gear change is not too bad. The throw is pretty short. Not as short as a Type R, obviously, but it's still not too bad. The throw on the six speed gearbox, manual handbrake and just to open up the armrest there. We have a USB connection and 12 volt socket and auxiliary input so underneath your armrest um, the glove box not very good uh, not as good as the last Civic but it's not so bad you can just fit a bottle there in the side pocket on the door and we just turn on the key we have our rev counter there in the middle engine temperature to the left fuel gauge to the right and our speedo there in digital just at the base of the windscreen now we just show you all our different functions here on the screen we can go down and select our iPod there and then select our phone and go down and select all your different radio stations so that is very handy and we have some functions down there for stability control and your alarm and as I said, all the functions on the door. Now, I really did like the space on this Civic. When you take your foot off the clutch, this space is very important to me. I did drive numerous cars and this space here was so tight. But in this Civic, I really do like it. And uh, that is just another one of the reasons why I like the Civic. So now it's time to take this Civic out for a drive. Just before we go on the drive, I'm just going to show you the rear leg room in this Civic and give you a look behind my driving position here. Uh, it's okay, it's, it's not too bad. Um, it's certainly not generous, but it will do. Of course, the new Civic has a longer wheelbase, so you would get more space behind the front seat. Headroom, it's tight. It is tight. Uh, not very good um, slight improvement on the new Civic also and we have our cup holders there on your nice comfy armrest so it's not too bad back here it's not too bad so let's hop outside and go for a drive and off we go So some of you were actually quite surprised that I went for another Civic. But as I said, the practicality and that 2.2 liter diesel engine, good power from this engine. Now the Mark 7 Golf that I drove was a 1.6 diesel, just not enough power. Uh, I didn't feel it just had enough, but um, which is why I didn't go for the Golf. And then of course there's the price of the Golf, I just think for your money, you're just not getting enough equipment for your money. And of course, I did try out numerous other cars. You've seen the videos. You might have seen the Mercedes, the W204 C-Class, the C200 CDI. Uh, nice car, comfortable car, practical, um, nice driving position as well, but just the running costs of a Mercedes and the service history of that car 
um, I just couldn't justify buying that car and then the tax over 700 euro I couldn't I couldn't do it but uh, very nice car but I went for something newer which is why I have this 2013 Civic and other cars I tried out the uh, Volkswagen up <laughs> well that was kind of a, a non-runner really uh, the engine not enough power uh, not enough space inside but great suspension in that car um, I really did like the suspension um, and other cars I tried uh, a Fiat Panda <laughs> there you go a uh, bit of a surprise that one that was a four-wheel drive Fiat Panda but I pretty much knew a couple of miles up the road that that car wouldn't be the one for me <laughs> and what else did I oh yeah the Alfa Romeo Giulietta now that was a nice car nice on the outside uh, nice on the inside but as I explained earlier the transmission tunnel was intruding so much into the cabin I just didn't have enough space for my left foot off the clutch and uh, it just I knew a mile up the road that this car wasn't the one for me and then it was too expensive um, uh, so I didn't I didn't go for it and then I tried out a Fiat um, 500 I do like them but again not enough power and I just didn't feel it was right not enough space inside uh, what else did I try oh yes the Fiat Punto let me not forget the Fiat Punto now you may be surprised to hear that it was down to a Fiat Punto or this car and you you might say why why a Fiat Punto well I do like the Fiat Punto I've had one I had one back in 2001 uh, I drove it all the way from Ireland to Monaco and uh, I clocked up 1,000 over 1,000 miles in one day in that Fiat Punto so the Fiat Punto can't be knocked uh, I did like it so I, I, I test drove that car it was a 2016 car so it still had a lot of warranty um, it would have been uh, up to 2021 warranty on that car and it would have cost me about another say 900 euro um, more than what I got this car for but I drove the Punto very happy with it and I was thinking long and hard should I go for the Punto and then you see I went into to the Honda dealer hopped into this car and that was it <laughs> uh, about not even a mile up the road I knew that this was the car for me it had everything I would look for in a car of this size practicality uh, a great engine 2.2 diesel as I say uh, plenty of power and this is the car that I went for and I'm more than happy with it so I have the cruise control set now at 120 kilometers an hour and you can see we're revving in <laughs> at just under 2000 rpm so if I was in my Honda Civic Type R that would be well past 3000 rpm in sixth gear so you can just see how much torque this engine has pulling away nicely and it's funny because when I first drove it I was in fourth gear out on the dual carriageway doing 100 kilometers and I was more than happy and then I realized I've actually two more gears um, it was revving in that low I was just so used to the Type R revving so high that uh, you hop into this car then and it revs so low it's far more relaxing to drive and of course the suspension as well you have fluid filled bushes um, in the suspension which the old car did not have so it just makes the comfort of this car so much better um, just even just a small bit up the road you could notice it straight away I was more than happy with that uh, suspension and comfort and we're cruising away quite quite nicely here at 120 kilometers and it's not windy outside only a small bit of wind but is there a wind just a slight bit of wind noise probably at the, the top of the pillar there um, but that is what it's like in this Civic at 120 kilometers so just going to overtake that Volvo and of course puts the boot down and I can't get past him so we'll move back in behind him no problem and 
Oh, can you just imagine the amount of money I'll save on fuel <laughs> with this car? Uh, I filled it up, as I said, uh, when I bought it. Drove up to Dublin, I was in Dublin last week. Drove back down, I've been driving all around town and I still have about a quarter of a tank left. What have I covered? 633 kilometers I've covered and I still have a quarter of a tank, so I'm very happy with that, guys, with this diesel. So just driving back here out onto the motorway, i just give you an idea of how much power the car has. We are slightly downhill, but a nice bit of power from this 2.2 litre diesel. You may have seen me driving the new Honda Civic, the FK7. Now that was a nice car. Uh, the three cylinder, one litre turbo engine with 127 brake horsepower. Might not be enough for some people, but I thought it was quite adequate. Uh, maybe the 1.5 turbo with 174 brake horsepower. That would be the one to go for. Um, but of course, if you want low tax, you will have to go for the diesel. This car is only 190 euro to tax. <laughs> so I'm very happy with that. Uh, as you all know, the Honda Civic Type R was 710 euro. So there's a huge saving right there <laughs> in the tax alone. And then we talk about insurance. Of course, I've touched upon this. You all know how I am on insurance on the Type R. It was a nightmare trying to get insurance. The the cheapest quote was 1051, 1051 euro. It was an absolute joke. This car, how much guys do you think I'm paying on insurance on this car? It's worth double the price, by the way. 533 euro, fully comprehensive on this car. So I am very happy with that. Uh, I'm back with an insurance company I was with before and they gave me a good quote. So I'm very happy with the insurance uh, fully comprehensive 533 euro so I'm saving even more money there so uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I have to ask myself why I even bought that type R in the first place but look I'm glad I did I had my fun with the car now it's moved on it'll probably end up back in the UK um, because running that car here in Ireland is just a joke um, yeah that's more or less where that car will end up, back in the UK. Uh, yeah, it's just too much to run it here in Ireland. So, I'm just going to make my way back to base. Yeah, the comfort in this car is just so much better than my old Civic Type R, the FN2. But uh, the new Civic, a far more sophisticated suspension, multi-link rear suspension. So it would be even better than this model, of course. But this car is still, I'm very impressed with the comfort. I find it absolutely fine. Now we're just pulling back into base. So I do hope it explains to you all, in some sort of way, why I bought this Honda Civic FK2. I'm very happy with the car, and I did drive the Ford Focus also. Um, very nice car to drive, I have to say, but I just felt it didn't have what the Honda Civic offers me. Uh, Equipment-wise, you just I felt it was the right car for me. And of course, it does have a reversing camera as well. I nearly forgot to mention that. Uh, yeah, very handy for parking. And then the Golf Mark 7 as well. I just felt 
you are paying too much for what you get equipment wise and then if you want more power you're paying way too much money and this was definitely very good value and only 63 and a half thousand kilometers from new one owner as well so very good car and very good condition as you saw yourself so that's it they are the reasons why i bought this honda civic fk2 ninth generation <laughs> thank you all very much for watching and i will talk to you all again in the next video until then take care cheers